Let's talk about some of the interesting terms in logic, truism, aphorism, dictum, dogma, tautology, contradiction and contingency. So let's begin with the very first one which is truism. Now very simple way to understand this. It is a sentence with incomplete truth condition and is true. Let's say I put in a simple statement under appropriate conditions sun rises. Now I am saying that sun rises but under appropriate conditions. I do not know what are those conditions but still I say this is a true statement. So that is what is truism. So truism is a sentence with I repeat again incomplete truth. Under certain conditions or under appropriate conditions, this is not a complete truth information. Okay, so that is what is truism. I have another good example for truism. Let's say no one was there when life first appeared on earth. Now this is a truism because it is an incomplete truth. We do not know whether there was someone or there was no one and how do we know about how life originated. So this is a truism. The next interesting form that we would understand is aphorism. Aphorism is bringing something concise and a kind of expression of general truth. This is something that runs from generations to generations. It's usually a traditional form that is being carried forward. A very good example of aphorism would be actions speak louder than word. Now this is a concise, crisp, memorable statement that is there and this is a truth. So I am trying to explain a general truth where I say when I am expressing something might be I am bringing animations here or uh, there are certain actions that I do it would be much much more uh, 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 emphatic as compared to the words that I speak. So actions speak louder than words as simple as that and that is aphorism. The next is dictum. Now dictum is a dogmatic statement and it is usually used with legal purpose. So legal writings, I say rules found in the constitution or the rules issued by the judge or a governing body would be the dictum. Those are part of the legal writing and are dogmatic statements that are given. So that is what is a dictum. What is dogma then? Dogma is nothing but the principles which have been laid down under religion. So if I uh, tell you 10 commandments of a religion or Christianity, then this is a dogma. It is a principle or certain guidelines or doctrines which are associated to a religion or a faith. So that is dogma. Now coming on to the most interesting part which is tautology. Now what is tautology? Tautology is an example where I say it is always true. It is true for each and every assigned subcomponents of it. So a good example of tautology would be uh, when I say that Indira Gandhi was assassinated or else she was not. Now this is an interesting example of tautology. Why? Because I am speaking a phrase or a statement where it is always true. So this statement is always true. The next is contradiction. Contradiction is always false. When I say I love studying and I do not love studying. So this is a contradiction it is always false this cannot be a true when i say i love studying and i do not love studying together this cannot be a correct version so this is always false now there is interestingly something in between when i say there is always truth it is tautology when i say there is always false this is contradiction but what if it is it may be true, it may be false, it can be true, it can be false, then it is known as contingency. So when I say it is raining, now this is a contingency. It can be raining today, it might not be raining tomorrow. So this is a contingency, it can be true, it can be false. But for those prepositions which are always true, it is part of tautology. Those which are always false is contradiction. 
neither true nor false sometimes true sometimes false is contingency so we would be covering that in detail in our further lectures but this is a brief idea to help you understand what a tautology is so here again i have a very simple example for you if a statement a proposition is true and the negation of the proposition is false then the tautology is to be true okay again the same example indira gandhi was assassinated the negation is she was not assassinated so my tautology is always true that indira gandhi is was either assassinated or else she was not so there can be only two conditions where one where there is assassination and the other where she was not assassinated so that means that makes it a true form okay so that is tautology now contingency as we already said there is uh, a kind of some false some true element that is seen so that is contingency i take a very simple example again if i say roses are red and violets are blue then roses aren't red now in certain conditions this would be true in certain conditions it would be false we would be understanding tautology contingency and contradiction in greater details with examples in a separate lecture so if you want to go into further details of these terms do not forget do not miss to refer that lecture because we have ample of examples to help you understand the concept very very clearly and very very interestingly rather so stay tuned for that lecture have a wonderful day ahead